When you first began writing the 13th Continuum, was it in your mind to turn this into a film, to turn this into a series, or did this come in incremental steps? Yeah, it was in my mind from the beginning, for sure, that it had to be a trilogy. Um, the story, once it started to take shape in my mind, was so epic and sweeping and it involved multiple different environments that I kind of felt strongly that it needed to be a series. Um, and also that I wanted to play the long game a little bit with the series, which means that um, Certain reveals don't happen even till second or third book, um, which is a little bit risky actually because it's harder to land a deal for multiple books all at once. Um, also, my main protagonists, like they kind of aren't really meeting in person until the second book and quite into it. So that, that was a big risk I took, but I took it because I really believed in the story I was telling. Um, in terms of the film aspect, I do write very visually. Um, and I do write in a way that is um, pretty adaptable. And this series in particular, because um, it's big world building science fiction with teen protagonists, um, Hollywood has changed a lot, especially even since I started working in it. Um, and so the types of films they make have become more narrow, um, but this slots right into what they still make. Um, which is the big genre films that could be a temple. So that's one of the reasons why we feel that this could be appropriate for film, even though, you know, TV is still on the table because TV is such a rich landscape right now, um, and lots of books are being adapted into television shows. Um, so you're seeing kind of this real shift in where uh, people are viewing and consuming content. Um, we're kind of in a very uh, changing time. I call it the wild, wild west of media, of publishing, so um, we'll see what comes to pass. How much did you working in film previously, you know, coming to LA, having that as your degree, help in seeing the bigger picture that if you had really started out with say an MFA and, and writing or something, maybe would have made it more myopic? Yeah, it would. I mean, I think MFA, and I, I went back and forth a lot about whether or not I needed one at a certain point in my life, and um, they're very expensive, typically. Yes, there are some that are funded. Those are incredibly difficult to get into, but for the most part, you're going to be going into debt, you know, most authors do, and then being an author isn't typically that lucrative um, for a variety of reasons. So you kind of end up in a hole. And you know, a lot of people with MFAs end up teaching. Um, that kind of ends up being what their job is. And if you teach too much, it can be hard to write your own work. Um, the other thing that happens with the MFA is they, uh, they largely teach to short story, which uh, not many people read short stories. Is not um, That's why you see a lot of people coming out of those programs might publish a short story collection right off the bat. Uh, if they're lucky. Um, and then also they tend not to be so welcoming to young adult writers and also to people who write genre like myself. There are exceptions to that. Uh, Holland's College has a great program for children's writers. Uh, I believe uh, Vermont College of Fine Arts has a great program. But for the most part, we are not really going to be getting into the Iowa Writers Workshop. So um, it's a little bit of a different process. But I think also not having that, I think some people with MFAs, it, it's a little intimidating. They come out of school and they're like, oh my gosh, I have to write like, you know, like these great, um, these great authors and, you know, as opposed to just really developing what you want to write in your story. Um, the film background was interesting because I think it did shape how I consume and understand stories. Um, it also, um, I write very structurally and very visually because um, a lot of my job was working on screenplays with uh, writers. And I worked on a lot of adaptations, and screenplays are incredibly structural. Uh, first act, second act, midpoint break, third act, and they really have to slot into a certain page count to even really be considered. Um, so I really kind of look at structure a lot when I'm writing a novel, and I think about that a lot. And I think, you know, there is a lot of uh, translation between the way these stories are told. What do you plan as the process? Once you finish the third book, which will be in May of next year, you're looking for a writer-director? Yes, a writer and or a director. I mean, sometimes a writer director. Um, in my experience working in development, um, having a director who has a vision for how they want to translate something to screen is the single most important aspect of um, any movie making. It's the single most determining aspect of whether the film will be any good. It's always the filmmaker. Um, it, it, Yes, screenwriters matter, of course they matter, um, but they're not the ultimate architects of the film. It really is the director. So um, that's kind of the difference between um, novels and, and movies, is that you know you write a script, it's going to go through a lot of filters, a lot of hands, a lot of lenses, often a lot of writers. Um, usually the person who writes the first draft of the script or the first drafts often is not the person that writes 
through uh, the movie going into production. A lot of times there's multiple writers. Um, so what I really would like is to find a director that really gets it and has a vision for how it should be told as a film um, and is willing to take creative license to really adapt it well. Because a lot of times what works in a book isn't going to work as well on screen. Um, and there's a lot of world building that gets opened up in the second and third books and so some of that might need to go into the first movie. So um, just kind of looking at it, um, and I am open to adapting it myself, but I actually would prefer to have someone else come in and do it because I think it's very difficult for authors, um, we're so close to our material, um, to have perspective to really do a good job with the screenplay. I think it's better sometimes to have someone with an outsider set of eyes to come in and really kind of shape the material. So uh, yeah, so we're kind of out to different writers and directors and looking for someone to come in. Um, and I just want that meeting where it's like someone who has the passion and the vision. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm not in a rush to do a deal with someone it doesn't feel right. So I just want to do it in a way that feels good and where we're going to do something great. That's interesting that you that you actually want to hand it off to someone else. Do you think that from your prior yes. working that you saw too many people that were close with great intentions and it didn't turn out? Yeah, that, uh -huh. I think that that's pretty accurate. And mm -hmm. even now, even just as a consumer, when I go to see films, um, there are certain uh, books that have been adapted by the authors. And a lot of the time, I think they might have benefited from someone else coming in. And I don't know if that's a popular opinion or not, but Gone Girl is a good example. I actually think that that might have benefited from someone else really working on that script. I mean, you can't say it's all hypothetical, but yeah, that's part of it. And it's also like if I'm going to spend time, I would almost rather spend time writing additional books as opposed to working on a screenplay where there's going to be a lot of notes, a lot of changes, and ultimately I'm not the architect of it. Um, yeah, and it's also a little bit of, you know, I'm not in a rush to get this done in a way that doesn't feel right. I've been in development and I've seen it for so long, um, and it makes me more realistic about the process. Like a lot of people think, oh my God, I got an option deal or I got this and like now I'm going to be at the premiere and like, oh my gosh, that does not at all mean your movie is going to be made. And uh, even if it is, it could be so long from now. Um, you know, it's a long process. And also you're looking at a big budget. Like that's the other thing that happens with um, the kind of stuff that I'm writing. Um, it can't be made for a low budget, right? We're talking something 60 to 80 million at the minimum. So that requires a huge investment on someone's part, if you think about it. Um, so I'm just much more realistic about the process because of my experience. Um, 